Welcome to Outlaw Woodworking. Today we get more parts delivered from the AV and CNC folks. And this will be part two of the Pro Series 4x8 CNC machine. Let's get started. Next up, we need to grease the linear bearings. And then we need to put in these socket head cap screws and these roll in T nuts to allow for this gantry interface plate and this riser extrusion. And let's get that started. The first thing I do is get out the linear bearings, get all my parts laid out, and put the grease certs onto the bearings. And basically you want them facing out so that they you're able to grease them later on. I then carefully slide them onto the linear rail and that goes easy enough. They seemed kind of stiff when I put them on there, but I talked to the Avid guys and they said that's normal. After I put all those on, I put the dust covers on and then I put these end caps on with the bumpers. And these pieces will actually hold the sensors or the sensor um, plate and also bump stops. So I put these on all four corners. Pretty easy. and basically just get them all tightened up. Next thing to do is these riser plates. And these are some nice looking pieces, big solid aluminum. And basically they're gonna take a lot, of, uh, a lot of socket head screws and T-nuts. These thread right into the, the linear bearings and I use Loctite. There's four screws on each linear bearing and I put these on both sides. And you see the, it's kind of L-shaped. You face the L towards the front of the machine. And those go on easy enough. I'm using Loctite on all screws at this point. And right here you put in these T-nuts and basically get these ready to slide on the extrusions. Next up, we slide the slide on the extrusion and bolt, bolt it down. And here you can see a picture of what it's supposed to be. You need to be make sure this plate, this top plate, is flush with this riser plate. Right here, you can see the extrusion. It's about a seven and a half inch square block of aluminum. And I pre-assemble these top plates. And this is what the gantry is actually going to sit on top of. And pretty easy, just slide those on and they go on flush with the top of the top of the plate and tighten them all down. Okay next up we're going to put the riser joining plate together and this requires six socket head cap screws and six roll in T-nuts. And you can see you slide it right up here and then it's got a measurement of six and five sixteenths from the top the plate here to the top of the plate here. Let's get those put on. Pre-assembly, you just put the put the socket head cap screws in there and and put the T-nuts on them ahead of time, and then you can slide them right on. So far, assembly has been really easy, fun to do. Right here, you can see me sliding them on, and then I measure the dimensions and tighten them up. Next up, we're going to see once we got it looking like this, we're ready to put the big gantry on there. And so now we're going to, that's it for the riser assembly. So let's click on gantry assembly and we're going to start on this. And this is one of the biggest pieces of aluminum here. And it's pretty nice to see that start to take shape. So if you scroll down, the first thing we're going to do is slide in these these T-nuts on each side, eight of them on each side. And then we are going to scroll down and we're going to put two in the bottom also. That way it's easier to get to them later because we're going to put these end plates on first. So you can see these gantry end caps, they got a hole in the bottom. And also, they if you look in this picture, they've got two threaded holes and they need to be facing outwards closer to the outside. 
And this big hole on the bottom is going to be for future to run wires through. So let's get started on that. And that's what it'll look like right there. Next up, we're going to we're going to put the gantry on and we're going to get that bolted together. So we've already got the T-nuts on the back side of this gantry and then we've already got these riser connector plates on and let's get it bolted. This is what it'll look like right there. Now this is my application right here. So we got two bolts on the bottom, two bolts on the inside, and then we've got on the back side, we've got these eight, eight bolts right here. And let's get that all put together. It's nice to finally actually put the gantry on. Uh, I had to wait for these parts a little while, but it's nice to get this put together. It starts looking like a machine. Um, yeah, this is all pretty easy. I basically slide in all the T-nuts and then put these end caps on and use Loctite on everything. Pretty much from this, from, from here on out, I've been using Loctite on everything. And you can see me putting these in right here, connecting it up. Yeah, everything, everything's going pretty smooth. I think if you had all the parts, you could put this machine together in two days, pretty easy. Um, obviously I don't have all the parts, so it's probably going to be three days of assembly for me because the first day I really only had the front, the, the frame parts and the linear, I had the frame, the linear rails and the gear track. And that's about all I had for part one. Once we get that all put together, the next step is the gear rack. And this is the first piece I slide on. And, you know, what I found out that, you know, in the previous, they have you put on these end caps on both sides. But then you got to take that end cap back off um, in order to slide this gear rack onto there. And also to slide these other, um, these other guide rails. So you do need to pull back off this, this end cap and slide that gear. So the first thing I do is put the gear rack on and basically you're using button head cap screws and T-nuts. And we go down here and shows you where to slide it in, shows you how far from the corner to place it. And you can clamp, if you have two of them, now I only have one, one gear, but if you have two, you can splice them together with this, this little gear rack splice. And this is what it's going to look like right here. So right here, again, we have to take off this thing, this end cap, to slide these linear rails on. And let's go ahead and put those on. Pretty simple assembly. The, the, the gear rack takes button head screws and T-nuts. And you just drop them all in and get them ready to, get them ready to put on. It's a lot of nuts and bolts in this project, but it's it's fun and it. Um... Next up, after we after we assemble these linear rails, you can see how many screws. Um, the next thing we need to do is put put our end cap back on. And we're, the next thing we're going to do scroll down here. Now this is an important step for these um, linear rail alignment. Just like we did on the on the bottom y-axis, on the x-axis up here, we need to do the same thing. And what we do is on both sides, we use the rail alignment jig, and then we tighten all the whole top and leave the bottom loose, and then we'll tighten the bottom in the future. And you just keep following the instructions. You can see the rail alignment tools on both sides. Next up, we run our linear bearings on the X axis gantry. Same procedure, grease fittings on the outside and slide those on. Let's get started. First thing I need to do is put these linear rails on and they got about a hundred screws. No, not really, but it, they got a lot of screws in each one. There's some small socket head cap screws with rolling T-nuts. And I basically assemble all those and get them ready to slide on. Pretty easy. 
again, the instructions in the AVID website are really thorough. Um, my only downfall has been parts, but you know, I have to be, I have to try to be patient and um, what's going on right now is the, with the, you know, the whole COVID thing has really messed up the parts supply chain. So it's not their fault, but uh, yeah, I have to just do what I can with whatever gets sent to me. And right here, you can see I'm putting, I've got the, I've got the linear rail, um, the guide or the, what do you call that thing? The alignment tool on both sides. And then I tighten those up really good. And right here, I'm putting on the bumper stops. After we get the bearings slid on, we're gonna put these little bump stops on the end. And these are gonna, these are basically just some, bump, we're gonna put all the bump stops on. These are on the upper gantry. And then you have, um, you have the sensor flag that needs to go right here. And it shows you exactly where to put it, inch and a half from the side. You're gonna put one of those on each side. And let's see what else in here shows you where to put it if you're on the outside. Now, I don't have this particular setup. Mine's flush with the, the riser extrusion. Here you can see one of the sensor flags. And yeah, pretty easy. There's the other side sensor flag. Next up, we're going to put this plate on. And this is going to hold our spindle and also the, sp the X axis motor. And here it shows you how to do it. Now, this plate has a lot of holes in it. So you kind of have to make sure that you read the instructions on your particular device. And I have an 8.7 horsepower motor, so it, it does show you how that works. So let's get started putting this on. First thing I do is is uh, lock tight all the screws and screw them to the linear bearings. And these are some flathead, pretty small little screws. But there's um, there's 16 screws that go into these four linear bearings. So that should hold up my spindle pretty pretty good. Next up, we are going to put this gantry plate on the back side of that and it has a it has dowel pins already in it and that's going to go up here on this top and you can see how it's placed right here and this is what's going to hold the motor and be able to track on that track first thing i had to do is get this plate put on and that'll accept the motor for the upper track for the x-axis and that's it for the gantry assembly so now let's um, let's click out of there, and we're going to assemble these motors. Now I I pre-assembled all these motors, and I did make a mistake in the beginning. I when I was going down here on the instructions with the motor assembly, I went straight here and see how it says right here NEMA 23. Well, I put all these gears at one and three thirty seconds. But that's not my motor. My motor is, um, my motor is down here. It's the the NEMA 34. And if you scroll down, see these are all NEMA 23. You keep going until you get to the NEMA 34, and you'll find a different height there. So okay, right here, NEMA 34 drive assembly. And if you scroll down you'll see it's inch and three eighths to the top. So in the beginning, I put them, put these at, at the NEMA, uh, the NEMA 23, but really I needed to be inch and three eighths. So then I redid those and then I was able to put those motors on. Let me show you how I did it. I then proceed to install all the motors using Loctite and the instructions are pretty easy. Um, yeah, it has one bolt and one set set screw on this right side. And then basically it has a tension spring on the other side. And that's all there is to it. And, and it tells you, you know, 
how far to go with the tension spring. Basically, you screw it down right before it touches the spring or where it compresses the spring. And then you um, do three or four revolutions and you're set. And what I would do is I would hold it up into the gear track, make sure it was seated properly. And um, that seemed to work pretty good. Um, actually, yeah, the, the motors were a lot easier than I thought they'd be. They, they, the, the, assemb the pre-assembly and the installation was uh, really straightforward, good instructions. And I didn't have any trouble, although I haven't turned them on yet. So we'll, I guess we'll see how they work when I'm, when I'm all done. And these are the Y-axis. And that's the other side over there, the y-axis. Next up is, uh, once we get all the motors situated and adjusted, the next thing we do is that we basically, this is all the installation instructions, tells you exactly how to adjust these spring loads on these motors. And that went actually pretty well. The next motor I install is on the X axis and this seats up against that gear track and it's the same assembly as the Y axis motors just in a vertical position and that was pretty easy. Actually all the motors I thought would be more difficult but they they all were really straightforward and uh, I'll look forward to running this machine. The next thing we needed to do was a Z axis and right here you can see they pre-assemble this which was kind of nice and they send it to you all pre-assembled and the first thing you need to do is actually take the take this this part off and also take these side dust covers off right here now at first i thought there's only two screws on here and there's like four holes but it turns out there was another bag that they send with it with the extra screws for that so you take these dust covers off and basically assemble this onto the onto your plate straight on there and it shows you exactly how to do it. Let's get started. All I do is follow the instructions and first take this plate off. And it's got some flathead screws that you got to kind of be careful because I almost stripped one of them out. Um, but it did come off pretty, it did, it, everything did turn out okay. I then took off these two dust covers, just like it said. And there was another bag with some extra screws for when I put it back on. Yeah, it's funny, I'll, one bag might be missing a few screws, but it might be in another bag. So I found that to be the case a few times. And right here, I um, put the dust, after mounting this on that plate, I then lock tight and put all these dust covers back on. I then get the front plate and lock tight and bolt this back on, bolt this on. I think it's important to lock tight these particular, this particular area for sure, because um, this actually is going to be holding the big spindle and, and also a couple of aluminum plates on top of this. So I think the lock tight is a important feature. Once I mount that on, then it was time to mount um, the motor on top. So I get that situated. It gives you, tells you, make sure you're at the NEMA. See, that's NEMA 23. So you scroll down a little further until you get to NEMA 34. And then it tells you the exact measurement right here, which is one and three sixteenths to the top of that. And that worked really well. Let me show you how I did it. The first thing I do is make sure that I got this this little end piece set at the exact height. And I double checked that with calipers and a measuring tape and and then I mounted that on there using Loctite. It has a set it has two set screws and it has a keyway. And that went pretty good. I then install this motor on the Z axis, the up and down, and it went in just Per perfect, no, no, no hiccups at all. After getting the motor assembly, 
The next thing that I needed to start doing is working on the cable track. I'm just following there one through 10 here and I just follow exactly and try not to make any mistakes. So right now we're going to put in the cable track and pretty self-explanatory. Although I did put one of them on backwards um, and then it wouldn't rotate because it only rotates one way. So right here you can see the first thing you got to do is put in put in these brackets right here where the red arrows are and they're powder coated red and these are the cable track tray brackets and that was pretty easy and the next thing you got to do is do the correct spacing for these trays and then tighten them down and right here you can see you lay out the cable tracks pretty easy and then you have these different um, cable track brackets. And then you start assembly of the actual cable track itself. Now these can only go on one way. If you reverse them, they won't rotate properly. I found that out on the Z axis up here. Anyway, let me show you how I did the cable tracks. First thing I do is lay out all the boxes with all the parts and separate all the nuts and bolts and get ready to assemble. The first thing I do, like I said, is put on these brackets, these powder coated red brackets, and get them all bolted on. I then put the trays in and start mounting the, the actual cable track on here. Now these screws they give you are pretty short. Um, the nuts barely fit on there. But it it does work. Here you can see the cable track mount. The, this is the main cable track to go to your X, your Y and X to the gantry. And here I'm putting on the cable track that goes from the, the Z axis onto the gantry. And I mark all these holes. I then put T nuts on all my marks and bolt it on. Once I get that bolted on, I can mount the actual cable track on it. And it shows you exactly in the instructions where to bolt to. It has, it has certain spots you need to bolt this to. And everything went really well. I thought the screws could have been a little longer on these they're little tiny flathead screws and uh, barely got the nut on there. But, it, but it, like I said, it did work. Next up was to put this riser plate on here. And this is what holds the cable track onto the Z-axis. And you basically, now here's where I figured out I had that on backwards. But then I fixed it and then bolted it on. I've actually enjoyed the assembly of this, this machine. Um, I wish I didn't have to wait for the parts so long, but, but I have enjoyed the assembly part process. It's pretty fun. Now here, I decided I was missing parts. So the next step in the application is to install the sensor, sensors and sensor cables and, and sensor, and I didn't have any of that. So I decided, well, I have the motor. Let's install the motor. And so I started installing the motor I then skipped over and I installed the, the electric cable boxes and I ran as much of the wire that they provided as possible. And that's basically as, as far as I got for, uh, for part two of the assembly of the Pro Series Avid machine. This is a heavy spindle for this machine. This, they just recently added these eight horsepower motors and I decided, well, might as well get the best they have. Right here, I'm going to put this plate on. Now, this plate actually has a, a consent. Uh, it's going to have, um, this is so that I can actually adjust the back and forth of the motor. So that when, if you're planing a board, um, you can actually be able to adjust the spindle to get a really flat surface. So that's kind of nice. 
And right here I'm opening up the cable track and I'm going to run the motor, the spindle motor cable, through that track. Basically I'm just going to get as much done as I can on this until the rest of the parts come. And I actually ended up um, using all the parts on, on day, day two. So now it'll just be a matter. I, th I think Avid has said that they're possibly going to ship me the rest of my stuff next week. So probably be another week or so before we get the final video of the assembly. But everything seemed to go pretty smooth. I didn't really, um, I didn't really have a lot of trouble. That's a pretty big cable right there because it's 220 volt. And uh, I basically feed that thing through both of the cable tracks. And right here you can see I'm going to put on the Avid CNC sign. And that kind of makes it look pretty nice. And that's, that's basically as far as I got with part two. I ran out of parts at this point. And here you can see it, uh, day two, I got all the electrical boxes on, all the motors on, the emergency stop, the spindle, the vacuum, I even hooked up the vacuum system. And that's about as far as I, that's, that's it for part two. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like the video, and I will see you next time. Later.